this is Suzanne Stumbo, and today we're talking about shiitake mushrooms, which has a lot of potential for in eastern Kentucky. Uh, most of our native trees are there, and for a shiitake, most people uh, wonder about it. A shiitake mushroom is considered an oak mushroom in Japan, and the shi tree in Japan is just simply an oak tree. And we have plenty of those in eastern Kentucky. Uh, there are also several other varieties of trees uh, that do well with shiitakes. Uh, when you want to choose the right tree with shiitakes, uh, so the top is oak. You can use both the gums, the maples, yellow poplar, uh, marconut hickory, beech, eucalyptus, hornbeam, paper birch, and several others here. Uh, the only ones that you do not want to use are ash, walnut, elms, black locusts, any of the evergreens, and anything that is already dead. Uh, the trees must be dormant at the time of inoculation. Uh, when you're cutting the logs, you choose a log size that is appropriate for you. They can vary. They recommend from three to eight inches thick and three to four foot long. If you're a smaller body weight, you'll probably want to go closer to three foot, uh, a taller, and stronger people will probably go with the forefoot. And they're best if inoculated within two weeks of cutting. And you can see fresh trees here and they're ready to be inoculated. And I put this picture in just to point out that it's not rocket science to do this project. Uh, you can use dowels or sawdust. However, the main problem with this is the marketing. We can grow them fairly easily, but we must build a market. Uh, with the market, I do recommend to buying local, Kentucky Proud, and the Appalachian Proud. Uh, you can use dowels, and they just simply look like dowels you would find uh, in the lumber store. They've been inoculated with the mushroom spawn, or you can use sawdust and that has been inoculated. Uh, this is a simply a, a put together of some shiitake classes at the extension office. Uh, here's another one. And almost every extension office in eastern Kentucky offers a shiitake class to get everybody started and learn exactly what they're doing. Uh, when you're doing this, you'll drill holes. If you're using the dowel spawn, you do a little bit smaller hole, which is 5 sixteenths and an inch to an inch and a half deep. And uh, if you're using the spawn, you use a little bigger diameter, a 3-8 inch drill bit, and you only go 1.25 to 1.5 inches deep. For drilling your holes, this, this is real easy. Uh, first two or three, you'll probably need to measure it and get a feel for it. After that, you can probably just eyeball it and go with it. Uh, placement, as you see the X's here, you've got several different rows. Uh, start three inches from the end and make sure they're six inches apart. And the number of rows depends on the size of the log. If your set log is five inches uh, diameter, it has four rows. Uh, it's real simple. Uh, the drill bit, there are several methods you can do. This is a commercial drill bit designed for shiitakes. Uh, one thing that's real critical with shiitakes is a drill, and I do not recommend it a hand drill. They're simply not high enough speed. If you're going to do very many of them, you want to invest in a high-speed grinder with an adapter. And as you can see here, uh, this has an adapter that fits a drill bit and just on a high-speed drill. Uh, this is one in action. All you're doing is starting with the... Uh, and you can see where it starts here, about three inches from the end, and then just move down about six inches for the next one. The hand plunger and a thumb plunger, the simple difference is the hand plunger you hit with your hand. The thumb plunger, all you do is to just you hit one hand and you can use your thumb. Uh, here are the basic tools. Uh, this is a shiitake uh, sawdust spawn. This is an inoculator. And you've got chi or cheese wax here, which is a commercial wax uh, that is sterilized. Uh, this shows a regular drill bit. If you're using a regular drill bit, you'll have to have several because when you use a high-speed drill, they get so hot, they'll stick and actually burn the wood, and you need to switch ever so often. 
Uh, a sample brush is works, a cotton dauber works, uh, a, a turkey baster works if it is glass. Uh, if you're using the brushes, make sure you use a pig bristle brush <laughs> because the nylon and everything will melt. Uh, if you're using dowels, this is just simply you've drilled the hole, you put a little dowel in it, tap it in. Uh, and this shows a uh, rubber mallet. What I've found to be easier is just a small craft hammer. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's sealed. You've got the dowel in, you've sealed it with wax, and you move on. Uh, this is what your sawdust spawn looks like. It'll come out in chunks. Just break it up, and when you fill it, to put it in a bowl, just get what you're going to use that day because you want to keep the rest of it sterile. And this is two plungers sitting in it. Uh, just simply take the plunger, uh, just load the, load the bottom of it, and then push it into the hole and use food grade wax. Again, this has to be sterile. Uh, you'll probably buy it commercially as cheese wax, uh, which works great. You do get it hot enough. You have to watch your wax. Uh, it has to be hot enough to sizzle and sterilize. It also has to be, if it gets, starts cooling off, uh, it'll get real hard to use and, and won't sizzle. If you get it too hot, it'll start to smoke. Uh, they have a new kind of wax out that I just found this year, and it's, it does not have to be heated. Uh, it's a new plug wax, so we're trying it to see how it works, but it's much simpler because you do not have to have anything uh, to heat your wax. Uh, this is what sawdust spawn looks like after it's been sealed. It'll little, look a little rough, but the wax seals it perfect. Make sure you label. There are several kinds of shiitake spawn. Some works at warmer temperatures, some works at cooler temperatures, and some is wide range. Make sure you put the date you inoculate it, uh, when you put the date you inoculate it and the strain you're using or spawn type. And stack it in the shade. Uh, one of the reasons this is good for Eastern Kentucky is we have a lot of shady valleys. Uh, we all have a lot of areas underneath trees and everything that can be used to store them. Or uh, you can use shade cloth. Uh, after you've inoculated, depending on the, how many inoculations you did and the, t and the size of the log, it will take 6 to 18 months for your first bloom. This is on the ground. It's showing some great shiitakes. Uh, the problem with this on the ground is you are asking for opportunistic uh, organisms to take over and also be in there. Uh, you want nothing but shiitakes there. Uh, this is a log cabin stack, and we have this sample example here at the extension office, and it's just a simple cross ties like a log cabin. This is a lean-to stack, and it does a whole lot of them. This is in a real shady little forest area. Uh, they can have them in pine trees or anything, as long as it's damp and shady. Uh, this is a TP stack, just a little bit different. Some people like it better. Uh, when you first start out, just try all three of them, see which one works best for you. Uh, this is a firewood stack. This works good for keeping them between blooms. Uh, when you do these, if you soak them, you'll probably put them to a log cabin stack when they're fruiting. It makes it much, much easier to harvest them. Keep the logs damp. Most of the year, we have no problem whatsoever with our logs. Uh, during the summertime or real dry spells, uh, they need to be watered one to two times per month. You can use this with soaker hose. You can use a sprinkler, just anything to get the water on them. And when you start seeing these, when you get white close to the end, they're getting ready to fruit. Here's another sample. You'll see the mycelium in the end, just a little closer view. When you see that, the mycelium has gone through the log and is ready to fruit. Uh, here's another one. Uh, you can see it down the sides and on the ends. Uh, th this is a dead giveaway. It's ready to, sh uh, to fruit. Uh, if you're going to force them, and when they bloom this, you soak them in water 12 to 24 hours, and after you soak them, uh, they should bloom in one to three days. They'll start fruiting, and you can see this, the different stacks in the back. And uh, where they've been, and it doesn't take anything fancy to get larger operation. Uh, a food, uh, livestock watering trough works perfect. Uh, fruiting should look like this if you're forcing it. It will not be quite as heavy, 
if you're do, letting them do it naturally, but if you're doing it to make money, you're going to fruit them on a regular schedule about every eight weeks. Uh, these are ready to harvest, and if you'll look at these, uh, the reason that the, the log cabin stack does so well is you can reach in here and get the mushrooms on the inside. If you're using the firewood stack, you're going to miss a few. Uh, harvesting, it's just real simple. You cut it off at the base of the log, and here's a nice harvest. Your ideal mushroom, and, and this is perfect when you're dealing with shiitakes, they do not eat the stem because they're real tough and woody. Uh, when you look at the shiitake, when it's over, the bottom of it should be still be bent under, and this would be more of a, a gourmet mushroom. Uh, this is a good crop. The edges are still down. It won't be quite as much money as that one with the, the ends completely down. And when they go like this, they're overly mature. Uh, the ones with the, the ideal mushroom will probably bring uh, somewhere between five and nine dollars a pound. The ones in the medium will do five or six dollars and the over, overly mature ones are probably going to only bring about two dollars. So it's real important to harvest them at the correct stage. Uh, if you've got shiitakes that are looking like this, that tells you there's a squirrel or a rodent or something that likes them as well as you do. Uh, to harvest and store them, uh, if you're going to be shipping them, they need to be in a refrigerator in less than an hour to keep their maximum quality. Uh, marketing options, they're fresh and go to the market. There are several of our grocery stores that are willing to buy locally. Uh, another option, if you have others left over, is to dry them. And restaurants really like the locally grown for their uh, menus. And here are some resources from UK. These are all online. Uh, you simply log on to the UK College of Ag website, uh, type in these numbers, or type in uh, the, what you're interested in. And on this one, if you'll look on uh, Forestry 88, uh, this will do the profits for small scale shiitakes. And at this, it'll give you for based on a 500 log unit, and uh, your 500 log unit should make somewhere, or clear somewhere between $2,500 and $2,900 uh, for 500 logs. And if you want to start small, this is a great way to start and just build if you feel comfortable and keep building for a profit. And any for information, any of your local extension services should be able to provide you all the information you need on shiitakes. And when you're in Eastern Kentucky, uh, I think every office there is also doing shiitake classes. Uh, I know in Pike County we do two a year. We do one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, most of the other counties do one. Uh, there is just so much interest in it right now that uh, we, we do two. We usually have a full class.